All right, hey YouTube. Um, this is a Panasonic, I believe it's a TR 1200X boombox. I'll make sure I have the correct model in the uh, video title. But um, I, I've had this thing for a little over a year, and I've been so worried about the CRT that used to be in here. Because I've seen these things explode and go bad, and uh, this one really, really looked like it was. I knew, I know it was in need of at least a rebuild because I wasn't even getting a raster out of it. I know the tube was good because the tube lit up, but uh, I wasn't. This thing wasn't able to generate a proper raster. It was very out of focus. The scan was very off, and uh, I, I could probably very easily fix this thing. Not a whole lot of caps in here. Probably it's all it needs. But you know what? There's a problem with these. You can't use them anymore because we've all gone digital. I'm not going to hook a digital converter up to it because that would be beside the point. Even though I don't plan on taking this anywhere. And I, I quite frankly have no... I have zero use for a black and white TV because I got a nice 37 inch flat panel mounted on the... Uh, what would be a wall down here. So I decided it would be my, in my best interest to just pull the chassis out and get rid of it and not have to worry about it. would also reduce some of the weight in this thing. But there was a problem. I was able to get in here and get the chassis out okay. But after I did so, but I had to, of course I had to cut some wires in doing so. And the reason I'm showing these is, these are, this is the important part of the whole story. I had to cut these wires to get it out of here. And um, I didn't have a schematic. I didn't know at the time what they did other than they were providing power to the TV chassis. So I took this thing out, put it back together, plugged it in, nothing. I probed around. I got all my voltages. I kind of put it aside and said, that's it. I'll figure it out <clears throat> at another time. Well, I never did quite figure it out until today. I finally sat down and decided I needed to do something about this. It's not much of a shortwave radio, but it's something to play around with. And So, I sat down and I started looking at... Well, the first thing I did was I started, I started peeking around back here at the transformer board. Pulled it out and looked at it and I realized the 12 volts that this thing runs on goes solely to a real thick red and blue wire that were cut. Where those red and blue wires go that were cut? Oh, they went up to here, into the chassis. Uh, so, I knew immediately the reason it quit working was because I pulled the chassis out, not realizing at the time that power was going through the chassis. But I had to figure out just to what extent was the power for the whole radio coming through the chassis. It didn't take me long to figure out by looking at the traces that they went through... The power came in on these two pins, and it came up, and it traveled through a fuse. There's a fuse over here, and then it went through, it went into, the, it went into a capacitor here, but it also went through a Zener diode, as you can see, D76, which I've since pulled out of the board. And what got me was when I'm looking over here at the other end, that's when I saw this jumper. And this jumper, as I followed it, goes into pieces of circuit that's not in this model, another, um, but anyway, it goes right around, and it goes into this thin red, thin red wire right here. Um, one of these is a thin red wire. But basically, the 12 volts, or the power, the B plus for this entire unit, was feeding through this board. I'm not sure what voltage the Zaner was, I'm not sure exactly what the Zaner is doing, but the Zaner was there across the 12 volt lead with the capacitor. So I figured, all right, so I pulled the Zaner and I decided not to pull that capacitor because it's old. In fact, I'm going to just throw that on the floor. And you can see back here, you can see the fix I did. I put the Zaner across the capacitor. This is a brand new capacitor, by the way. This is a 50 volt at 10,000 microfarad. The original was a 3300 microfarad at 35 volts, so this is easily three times the um, 
capacitance value, but it's only a power filtering cap. And I'm dealing with some pretty hefty solid state diodes. So it's not like on a tube unit where you're going to worry about blowing out your rectifiers. So that's basically all I did. I connected the two red wires together that were going to the chassis, the, the TV chassis. And the black, gray, and blue wires connect together to the negative side. And that's it. That was all... I needed from the TV uh, Cassie to get this radio working again. Uh, I can't believe I missed that the first time I took it apart, but you know, I made assumptions without having a schematic. So sometimes that stuff happens. The important part is I was able to figure it out without a schematic, and uh, it works. <laughs> Such as it is, it does work. Um, it's noisy as hell. Um, it's got a really crappy AM radio on it. I'm definitely, definitely going to be winding another coil somewhere onto the chassis to act as a, um, and coupling for an external antenna. The short wave I'm going to figure out, I think I can couple that directly into where the bar antenna used to go. Uh, this is actually, this is a selection for the internal or external antenna. As you can see, TV, FM, and shortwave happen to use the 300 ohm twin lead. And uh, basically, I can probably just clip right into this and get something approximate for my long wire antenna outside. So. I'm happy about that. I'll, I just have to put that capacitor somewhere inside of here and seal it up and find out where I put the back unit so you're not sticking your hand all the way through. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that works. It does have a light up here that kind of works. Um, handy in the dark. This is a former, this used to be the TV tuner. Uh, it did, yes, you saw that right, VHF and UHF on uh, both European, UK, and, and whatnot. So that was interesting. Obviously, it wasn't a color TV. It was black and white, so it was probably multi-scan of Able. I may wind up mounting an LCD in here for some dumb reason, if I can find a 4x3 LCD this size. Uh, that's probably a 13-inch or so. Actually, it's more, more like a 4 or 5. Uh, I don't have a tape measure handy, and I'm not really good at guessing length. So anyway, there you go. If you have one of these and you want to take the TV chassis out, just remember there's a Zener diode and a capacitor on that board where the power leads are wire wrapped to it. You need to make sure you pull those and connect those up somewhere inside the radio. Otherwise, you're not getting any power anywhere. So from another, uh, another project, somewhat out of the way, I really need to rebuild this thing, but I'm not going to. It's not going to be a serious radio, and mostly I'm just trying to get it working so that other people who come down here can use it without worrying about getting blown up. So anyway, I am out of here. I'm going to clear off some space, hook a shortwave antenna up to this thing, and find out just what it'll pick up tonight. So you guys have a good evening, and thank you for watching. I promise I will get the video of my long wire antenna up sometime. I don't like doing video editing. I haven't done any in a while, so it's going to be interesting. So, take care.